Today on Locked On Rockies, the Rockies on the verge of a road sweep. Impressive, efficient, not flashy, not always the greatest starts from Chase Anderson and Connor Siebold, but important ones. Talking about that and more on today's episode. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for today, the 14th day of June in the year 2023. I am your host of the Locked on Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk. Been following this team my entire life and bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network for three seasons now. Today on the pod, we're going to break down where the Rockies are at in the series with the Red Sox. Some stabilization in the rotation and how much we can expect and how much we really should get our uh, how ahead of ourselves should we get in our excitement for these starts from Chase Anderson and Connor Siebold and a little bit more of a preview ahead of the finale tonight. Uh, before we dive too far into things tonight, I want to remind you that we're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. Your subscription to the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel is one of the best ways to help the show and one of the biggest ways you can help. Help the show grow. It's easy peasy. Just click that subscribe button. We got to 450 recently. And uh, when you are subscribed, you'll know when we go live and you can be part of the show. The Lockdown Rockies YouTube chat. Always where you can fire up your hot takes, your thoughts, your comments about the Rockies. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And I wanted to take today to uh, highlight the recent starts from Chase Anderson and uh, Connor Siebold here. And again, nothing too dominant necessarily. Nothing sitting there where you're where you're sitting there and you're like, wow, this is something interesting. It's just honestly been providing some stabilization. Chase Anderson, you can honestly sit there and be a little bit uh, impressed with here. 36 innings so far. Uh, this season, 25 strikeouts in that time, 1.05 whip, 2.72 ERA, uh, eight uh, starts or six starts there in that time as well. He, uh, you know, got dinged up a little bit and he's given up multiple runs in the past few starts for the Rockies. But when you're able to get someone actually coming out and striking out seven, striking out six, it's something that the Rockies need. It's uh, and and these are veteran pitchers that can handle business and as much as you would like to see them go deeper, uh, especially uh, here, Chase Anderson has not gone past the fifth inning uh, in, in the last two starts of his. And uh, the Giants were able to uh, to tag him for three earned runs. It's I'm, I'm not sitting here and saying like, whoa, the uh, you know, these are, are, are great, but they're efficient and they're good for where the Rockies are at right now and they have been good enough to keep the Rockies in ball games and baseball pig puts up a, a, a point uh, here aside from a pop-up home run from Devers I thought last night's start from Anderson was great uh yeah and you can uh you know you, you take off that home run you take off that Devers home run and it ticks down uh you know the amount of the, the earned runs given up there and again six strikeouts to one walk great ratio it's a, especially when you saw him improve from uh you know only getting two strikeouts against Kansas City, still was able to get San Francisco to strike out seven times. That was that weird game with the Rockies and walks and strikeouts, I think, was, was that start. And then on the other side, Connor Siebold has gotten at least four strikeouts in his last three starts and hasn't given up more than two runs uh, in his past two starts or three starts. The most he gave up was two against San Francisco, a couple of walks in those games. But these are solid starts, especially when the Rockies were looking at a moment where they didn't know where they were going to turn. They didn't know where to go. So these veterans being able to come up, have an opportunity to, to show off about what they can do, uh, it, it was great. And especially for Siebold being able to go out and have a great start against the Red Sox, six innings, uh, you know, only allowing the one earned run. And, uh, and the six strikeouts to one walk, that's a great line. Six hits in the game, but if you're – Seabold is his old thing seems to be navigating trouble and getting out of, 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 of jams. I don't know why this guy loves to pitch with, with runners on and runners uh, it, it threatening, but he seems to be pretty efficient, at least lately, at getting out of it. Now, I'm not holding my breath and sitting here and thinking that these guys are going to drastically change the outlook of, of, the, uh, of the season, 
but it's it's certainly in uh, the right in the right direction for these players. It's certainly an improvement for these players uh, when you compare it to their career. Uh, Connor Siebold right now uh, he is throwing a lower amount of uh, his whip is down here in more innings pitched this year. The batting average against him is down in more innings pitched this year on the Rockies. Uh, and he's uh, also he's just kind of up better across the board in most categories. He's uh, he gave up five home runs in uh, uh, eleven pitch uh, eleven innings pitched. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. In eighteen innings pitched, uh, he, he's only he's given up seven in fifty three in uh, two thirds innings here this season. So again, an improvement there. There's more home runs, but uh, the ratio breaks down a little bit better. Solid back end pitching is exactly what the Rockies needed, and for the last three starts, the Rockies have been in positions to win ball games because of mostly because of starting pitching. Chase Anderson, you might be you you might ding a little bit for a crooked number there from San Francisco, but that still should be three runs shouldn't be something too hard for you to overcome at your home ballpark. I think the biggest disappointment for the last the, for the home stand for the Rockies was the lack of offense. And the lack of the ability for the Rockies to, to, to do damage there in a place that they are uh, known to do damage in. The big issue and the big uh, question mark and the big hassle, like we mentioned a little bit there uh, for these uh, these pitchers, is they're not going super deep in games. They're not going too far uh, into games much past the sixth inning, which, you know, most starters, if you can get with, with uh, Seabold is, is averaging six innings. He's gotten to six innings in his last two starts, five and a third against Arizona in the in the third uh um there so he's getting to that six inning mark uh chase anderson the the rockies have had to turn to the bullpen a little bit earlier and and, and that's kind of the issue there when you're looking at these guys and the stable and, and the stability that they have brought over the last few starts to the rockies how long can you really rely on it in if you're continuing to have to turn to a, a bullpen that's been overworked now, the Rockies had some success here and, and were able to pick up and, and hang in there and uh, take the win from Boston there in uh, the last night's game, uh, backing up Siebel, uh, uh, backing up Anderson with uh, the, the three runs. But I'm not, I, I don't think we need to, to worry too much about, for example, Chase Anderson, who was claimed off of waivers, and Connor Siebel. Connor Siebold's younger, you know. You, if you if you continue to see a promising year of Chase and of, of of Connor Siebold in uh, you know as he as he navigates through this season, maybe again it won't be flashy, it won't be great. You at least have a young guy that you have the possibility to work on things with. Chase Anderson, you're just looking for veteran starts from him and continuing to 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 be efficient as he continues to be uh, someone that for the Rockies that has one of the better ERAs. Granted, a lot less innings pitch, but now, uh, 2.72 ERA on the season for Chase Anderson here, uh, and, and uh, 25 strikeouts and a whip of 1.05. Not flashy, not great, but what the Rockies have needed, both Connor Siebold and Chase Anderson are pitching efficiently enough to keep the Rockies in ballgames and give the Rockies chances to win ballgames and give them something that they needed, which was pitchers that you can count on. I don't... You can be nervous, and I think in the back of your mind you're, you're sitting there, but right now in the Rockies rotation, you feel a heck of a lot more confident in Chase Anderson and Connor Siebel than you do to Nelson Lamette. I mean, that's, that's I think, the, the, the biggest example there of, of the option there. And as Austin Gomber, Austin Gomber has gone, had the solid stretches, but has Austin Gomber showed you enough to really, you know, be as more confident and, and better than these pitchers as well this season? Not necessarily, you know, so I, I think that these guys are giving giving you opportunities to uh, to 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 help this team, which they desperately needed in the big picture long stretch, though. I think that we're going to, you know, I, I, I think the good luck in the is going to wear off and we're going to see some pretty middle of the road, maybe even under league average finish. But at the same time, for all of the options and where the Rockies are at right now. They're doing enough to help the help keep the Rockies uh, battling and in ball games, and I'm going to ride this wave until it crashes because I, I, you know, I'm I'm encouraged, especially when you're seeing the uh, you know Seabold being a little bit younger, maybe the Rockies being able to do a little bit more with him, and Chase Anderson's coming up and 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 ha having veteran uh veteran starts, not great, not flashy.
but he's striking out multiple, you know, a good amount of people all, along the way. So just wanted to, uh, to wanted to comment on those two pitchers who have, uh, have been helping out the rocks here in their last few starts. Uh, wanted to dive into now let's talk about it. Is it important if the Rockies sweep, what does it mean for the Rockies? If they do pull off the sweep here, his first pitch is a little less than an hour away, a little pregame locked on Rockies for you here today. Uh, let's dive into that coming up in segment number two. We'll also take some comments from the live chat, which you can be a part of by subscribing to locked on Rockies on YouTube, knowing when we go live and being part of the show. Uh, let's get to more Rockies baseball in segment number two. Before that, though, got to tell you about our friends at Game Time. Game Time's got you covered when you're looking for last-second deals on all of the big events in your area. If you've been sleeping on it, if you've been going back and forth, and then you finally get that last-minute oof, hey, you know what? I do want to go out and have some fun. Game Time's got you covered. They got killer deals on last-minute tickets, and their best, their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over tickets and get hyped for all the fun you'll have. Game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast, free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. Also on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app. If you just search Locked On Rockies, you'll be taken to where you need to go. You can also get all your play-by-play -play action. Play-by-play -play coming up here in just a little bit, about 5, 10 Mountain Time. Rockies, Red Sox, and, uh, you know, go check it out there. All the great coverage on Sirius XM. And I want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service and live on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the live chat just like Baseball Pig and Nicholas Delvo. Nicholas Delvo says, doesn't need to be flashy, just needs to get it done. Exactly. And again, what, are, what we're looking at Chase Anderson and we're not thinking, you know, it's it's not assessing like we assess a Herman Marquez and a Kyle Freeland and some of these other guys and Antonio Sensatella, long contracts or whatever. I'm just looking for Chase Anderson to go out and give the Rockies a chance each and every time he steps on the bump this year. And the past three starts, more or less, it's a little, a little iffy in some areas. He's done that. And I hope he continues to do that. Same with Connor Siebold, who's looking to rebound in a place that's difficult to pitch, especially for a young guy. So uh, the Rockies are on the verge of sweeping the Red Sox here. And I don't necessarily know how big of a deal it is, but when the Rockies are in a position to, to take a team and knock them below 500, mess up their, their current run, it's June, obviously, the playoffs are, are a long ways away. But to go out on the road especially and do it, that's the impressive part. When you're looking for key takeaways here and when you're looking for things to break down about the Rockies and this series, yeah, you can go with these, you know, they've been blowing some leads, they've been winning games late, going into extra innings, taking care of business and handling things. I... The most impressive thing, I think, on top of this, too, not only it being on the road, a great way to handle the 10th inning in both of the games here. They, they To be aggressive and to put up crooked numbers, has it, it's been key. It's been pivotal. If the Rockies were not have not played as well in the top of the 10th, they'd be losing games on walk-offs. I mean, that, that's that's the simple fact of the matter. I mean, uh, uh, we did get uh, Devers, who, who just blasted one, all the way, uh, you know, that, that ball that was crushed in the 10th inning there. And it's good. It was great that the Rockies were able to have another strong top of the 10th inning to put themselves in a situation to win in a bullpen that was turning to a new closer and a new person in that capacity. And uh, the Rockies are one win away from getting to 30 and 40, uh, which would be, uh, you know, that's one milestone. That's, and then if you're if you're if you're looking ahead and you're kind of looking at things, that would only that puts the Red Sox three wins ahead of them, and the, the record doesn't shake out as pretty with, with uh, when you look at things. But that is small wins for the Rockies. It is. It's it's a good and, and it's a and and good play against decent teams on the road is a great sign for this Rockies club. 
for this team to go out and score runs and score runs late and not have so many times where they get shut out, it's good. It's really, it's, it's a nice thing to see. You just still kind of sit there and you have to remind yourself of where the Rockies are at, but you're encouraged. You're encouraged by some of the players that are, 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 are performing. Randall Gritchick continues to swing a bat pretty well. Elias Diaz continues to be one of the most effective catchers in the entire game. All this is good. Rockies are still in fifth place of the NL West. They're still 13 games out of first place, and they're looking pretty deep on the wild card spot. But the Rockies are also entrusting young guys. They're playing, they're playing better baseball, and they're responding to another bad stretch. Overall, however, this, this Rockies club is still kind of reeling, and especially compared to the division. What what's as much as I'm excited about this road sweep of the uh, that the Rockies might potentially pull off, I'm still reeling from the fact that the Rockies had back-to-back sweeps to end, or were the victims of back-to-back sweeps by NLS rivals, and were one late-game swing and rain delay away from that being three straight sweeps from NL West teams against the Rockies. I, as much as I talk about the, you know, how winning the division isn't necessarily as important and things of that nature, I still think when you look at division play, that's going to tell the real true story of where the season's going to end up. It's really cool that the Rockies outdueled the Mets this season. It's really cool that the Red, the Rockies might sweep the Red Sox and and they played the Marlins well. But when you just are reminded from your division rivals. And when they are when they are beating you as as handedly as they have been, maybe not as handedly. I think the Giants obviously came back from some trouble, but that's a that's the kind of things I focus on when I'm looking at importance of regular season wins, regular season sweeps. Hey, going into Boston sweep, no joke, it's not easy to do. Weird place to play. A team that the Red Sox, of course, looking to, you know, they were looking at this series to get themselves above 500 and fight back in a very difficult division there as well. But I did when I when I'm looking big picture, it just reminds me of the the, the Rockies recent struggles against the division. But as an answer to that, the Rockies lost six in a row. They've responded with a three game win streak. That's I, I, it's it's nice to see that, especially because the Rockies fell victim to what we've seen a bunch, and especially this year, is just really tough stretches of baseball uh, for, for a significant chunk of time. Uh, the Rockies played, let's see here, that's uh, six, nine. That is, the Rockies played 13 games. 13 games and uh, before this Red Sox series, and they won three of them. Going three and ten, including six of those games being at home. That's an issue. That's a problem. And uh, that's the bigger picture, bigger idea, bigger thought process for me right now. But hey, beating Boston in their own ballpark, always fun, always good, always exciting. And, and especially to do it in the way that the Rockies have. I, I am really encouraged by the late offense from the Rockies. I'd wish you to get going. But the Rockies are at least scoring and uh, you know and and being somewhat efficient on offense, even if it takes up until the last part of the uh, of the of the game to do so. Uh, let's take a quick look at a little bit more some uh, some stats here. Uh, we'll take a look a little bit of the uh, some of these uh, road home uh, records, perhaps, and uh, just chat. Uh, about the game, which is just about to be underway here, coming up in segment number three. Stay tuned for that. That's coming up right after this. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming service and on the Sirius XM app. You can find all your Rockies action by searching Rockies or Locked On Rockies on Sirius XM or the Sirius XM app. Be taken where you need to go. Get all your Rockies coverage. And lots, lots more there. And you can be part of the Rockies podcast extraordinaire that we call the Locked On Rockies podcast by joining in the live chat on YouTube. When you subscribe to Locked On Rockies, you know, when we go live, shout out to my everydayers out there, Baseball Pig and Nicholas Delvo for joining us in the live chat today. Rockies uh, coming up here with a uh, nice game three uh, on the way. 
in, in, in a situation in which I think the Red Sox find themselves incredibly frustrated. I think the the, the Red Sox uh, are are someone that were were pretty surprised to see the Rockies come out and 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 do some damage. I mean, this is a Rockies team on the road that still this year is thirteen and twenty one. Their run differential is minus sixty seven. In case you're curious, everyone in the NL Central has a minus run differential. Everyone in the National League East, other than the Braves has a uh, po- uh, negative run differential. Uh, the AL East, it's a different story. The Rockies, are the Red Sox now, the run differential of minus two. Fenway Park, not been uh, a, a place of great success for the uh, for the Red Sox there. 16 and 17 now on the season. But that's, that's like I said, really imp- uh, when you're looking to be impressed from this series, it's the Rockies getting a sweep in which they, uh, again, struggle on the road. Uh, I, I thought their road record was actually gonna be a little bit better. It feels better this year, but maybe not, you know, a little bit blinded more so by the frustrations of this team not being as efficient at home as they could be. And uh, so what do we want to see? What are we looking for in this finale against the Red Sox? Other than the sweep, I want to see Austin Gomber succeed i want to see the austin gomber we've seen flashes of and i don't want to see a bunch of home runs given up from austin gomber which i worry about when you're looking at 16 home runs a 7.57 era and in a place that we've seen it's pretty easy to hit some home runs in in fenway park now it's going to take more than just austin gomber in this situation, but the, the Rockies uh, are, are going to be going up against a pitcher that uh, whip is, is above 1.2, an ERA near four in uh, Garrett Whitlock here. Uh, good strikeout to walk ratio, though, here. Uh, you know, Whitlock has 13 less strikeouts in almost half of the amount of innings pitched than Austin Gomber. And his strikeout to walk ratio is 26 to six, whereas Austin Gomber's is 39 strikeouts to 27 walks. Way too many free passes from Gomber, and then the big nosebleed, 16 home runs, like I mentioned. And that's you know, that's that's Rafael. Rafael Devers did it twice yesterday. He could be looking to feast again on, on a Gomber. The, the, the curveball's got to be sharp, the off speed stuff's got to be working, it's got to be efe- effective. He is the biggest player to watch, I think, tonight. Uh, another dude to watch continues to be Nolan Jones, who is making an immediate impact for this Rockies team and immediately super fun. Great catch, a uh, couple of great defense. Really, uh, another thing I think to, to 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 focus on and look at as we wind down this series is the Rockies playing strong defense overall in this series. Great reads off of the monster, good efficient, efficient tagging plays at, at, at home, good relays. This is a team that is showing to be uh, – uh, better on defense and baseball pig is saying i believe devers is getting the nine off so that that's a wave of relief a little bit there from from the rockies as well but again a red Sox lineup that is played around 500 ball that that needs to win these type of games and avoid sweeps like this to remain relevancy as they're trying to get out of the basement in the east uh they certainly will be will be ready to go and and ready to battle here I'm going to continue to keep my eyes on Ryan McMahon as well, who's continuing to be, man, if it's just the, I, I'm liking even when Ryan McMahon is getting out, it's still strong swings. It's still high exit velocities. He still seems to be in a great groove. And like I mentioned, the defense, a pivotal part. I think the Rockies got that play at third that they, they lost the challenge on in, in yesterday's game as well. I think, uh, as the uh, the angles might have been too close, I think that there was a close play that the Rockies missed out on via challenge that uh, they certainly could have had. So Austin Gomber has to be, start things off strong for the Rockies, and the Rockies got to have that offense come out a little bit earlier and not wait so long because I think this is going to be a Red Sox team that's really going to look to jump all over a, a home run per, prone potential pitcher in Austin Gomber, uh, especially when they're playing at Fenway. So That's my big player to watch. Those are my storylines to watch here as we look ahead to game number three. Would love to see a sweep. Take the series win, absolutely, especially doing uh, being efficient in extra innings. You love to see that as well. And uh, shout-outs to Chase Anderson and uh, Connor Siebold for keeping the Rockies in their their last three starts. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel. Noah uh, Nicholas Delvo, baseball pig. Here on the uh, on the uh, pod today, 
Thank you so much for making us your first listen. And shout out to our everyday listeners out there. Catch all the Locked On Rockies action and Rockies action on the SiriusXM app or SiriusXM. And folks, don't miss out. Rockies, Red Sox, series finale heading your way in about 40 minutes. Until next time, I'm Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.